Hi, my name is Gabrielle Sin, and I will be sharing an introduction to Storybook for React. So we're going to cover today what is Storybook for React, why would you use it, how would you implement it, and some examples. So Storybook for React is a UI development environment for your React components. With it, you can visualize them in different states and develop them interactively. Some may refer to it as a component explorer. While it is integrated into your app, it does run outside of it and allows you to work on a single component in isolation without worrying about app-specific dependencies and requirements. A little bit of its history. In early 2016, the tool launched as React Storybook, as it only supported the React library at that time. And the reception was and still is very positive. It even hit the number one product of the day on April 3rd, 2016, and has over 13,000 stars on GitHub in a very short amount of time. It was initially a side project of a Sri Lankan-based startup called Kadira. And Kadira is just a performance monitoring system for um, a service called Meteor, which is another web development framework for JavaScript. I like to point out that this was actually a side project of Kadira, um, but it, what's so great about it is that a side project can actually turn into something very useful to the community. So useful that when Kadira shut down earlier this year, Hundreds of developers contributed to the open source project to not only keep it alive, but expand on its features. So in May of this year, they launched um, their version 3.0 and rebranded simply as Storybook because their 3.0 actually added compatibility with Vue, which is another JavaScript framework. So hence, Storybook for React, Storybook for Vue. Today, I'm just going to be covering Storybook for React. So I want to start off with um, a little story. Many of you may recall life before React. For some of us, that was just a few weeks ago. Um, the pains of jQuery traversing the DOM all manifested in a special gift we remember as Trip Planner. It was a special workshop from hell that conjures memories of frustration. So when React was introduced to our stack, it was like, and it felt like, oh no. <laughs> it was like this. and. It, Oh, no. <laughs> I'll stop clicking. It felt like that. It was perfect to us. <laughs> so but let's talk about development in React. While we've been enjoying developing our applications in React, maybe compared to our experiences before, have we considered what could be better? So I'm going to do a little bit of live coding, which is fine, because if things go wrong, that's sort of the point. Um, all right. Oops, escape. <laughs> All right, so this is a very small application that shows campuses and students associated with those campuses. And say we are looking at our components, we're navigating to certain places, maybe we want to take a look at our students, maybe we would like to add a student, and so I'd like to add myself. And I want to go to the Lenny Liberal Arts Campus. But say I don't like the look of this, of this component or this button. Maybe I want it to just look like a normal button, and I don't think it needs to be a green success button. So I'll have to find in my file system where this component might be. So it's probably going to be in my app, probably in my components. And then this is a student form, so it's likely in this file. So I have to go through my file and figure out exactly where this button is. And I know that this is, oh, it's right here. So I want to remove the plus sign, and I want to take out this class name. And so now I try to refresh my page. We've all seen this page before many times, and so it likely means that our Webpack wasn't ready. And so now I have back to my, my home page, and I have to go direct myself back to this same page. So now we see the changes, but I've lost reference to my name input, and I've lost reference to the campus that I selected. But imagine doing this over 100 times for 30 different components in your development cycle. It can be really frustrating. So let's recap the pain points. Your app has to reload. And so when your app reloads, it usually loses context of where you're at. Um, and what you are doing. And sometimes you're fixing the styles in that context. And it also makes network requests. In a small app like this, it may not be that big of a deal. But when you're working across a large team or making network requests, it may not be the most ideal 
um, situation. Tangentially, you also would like to have your components reusable. Know exactly how the props work, um, be able to know where to find it. I know that I used a lot of the components in some of our um, workshops, and knowing exactly where they were was sometimes um, part of the problem. And additionally, collaboration. If you've got a new person joining your team, is there a place where they can just jump into your code and understand how your components work and what props are being passed down? This is where Storybook for React comes in. This is their GUI, but let's talk a little bit about some of the initial aspects of the tool. Storybook is integrated into your app and actually pulls on your existing NPM models and your existing Babel configurations, and it allows you to get the component in the state that you need without having to manipulate a larger application. Oh, oh. That's not good. <laughs> oh, there. OK. So, um, Storybook for React is actually pretty simple to implement. Um, you essentially um, navigate to your project. You will download um, some CLI commands, one of which being important is the get storybook. Of course, you down or install Storybook for React as well, add corresponding scripts, and it essentially will compile everything together in their own webpack and their own dev setup. Um, and offer you a local host to see their GUI. So because Storybook for React actually runs their own webpack and their own dev setup, if you have your, in your app, you will likely also have a webpack as well. And so if they don't play well, well nicely together, you essentially would have to make some modifications and import your webpack into theirs. So um, to get your components into their GUI, you would essentially write test spec or stories, which is very reminiscent to test specs. And if you're familiar with test-driven de development, it is similar in the sense that it forces you to think about the different states of your components um, and the relationships, relationships of its inputs early on. That includes deciding how to couple the components with the data structures saved in your store, passed down by props, or lo stored locally. So um, before we do a quick little demo, um, I want to also talk about how this might change your workflow. Um, the back end, for example, may not may continually be in flux. Maybe your endpoints aren't ready um, and, and may not be entirely fleshed out for you to connect. But front end developers can continue to make progress, test and adjust styling and show their work even if the details continue to change. It can prevent from other teams being a blocker to getting work done. So I am going to show so you just run npm storybook, and it'll run it for you. And this is your GUI. So the once storybook is um, installed into your application, it'll create a dot storybook with their configurations and create a file with an index. I'm just going to show the example that comes along with the demo. <coughs> So this is what a story looks like. And here are your different files. And this is what a button might look like. So instead of having to do all the steps that we had done last time, reload your app, uh, make some changes, all we have to do is, hello, Grace Hoppers. And the Webpack will rerun. And now we see it here. So you can do that hundreds of times and work um, closely with other parts of your team and get them to the state that you want to without all of the legwork. All right. So here are some of the companies that are using <coughs> Storybook as part of their development. Um, the real impact of Storybook is actually best seen and most felt in a large component library, um, and especially with a larger team. So talking about collaboration, it can help get new team members up to date with existing components in your library and how they work. It may help a designer or a product manager context switch back to what you're maybe asking for something that they may have wrapped up weeks ago. So let's take a quick look so we can see what an extensive library might look like. So this is from Coursera. And this is their 10 plus 
different drop-down menus. While we don't have the source code to change any of their stories to make changes here, but imagine having to manage all of these drop-downs and make sure that they're consistent across your app. Now they're all in one place and you can reuse and even show some of the info and the props that are available to it. All right. So to recap all the things that you get with Storybook for React, it inherently encourages you to con consider variations of your state early on. It allows you to work on an isolated component without having to worry about the entire state of the app. It allows you to develop with flexibility and accommodate for changes. You can find your components easily for reuse and see related props. It can serve as a documentation for collaborating with cross-functional teams. And you can see the UI changes online and review the app without leaving your browser. So, to wrap up, I hope this introduction has displayed how Storybook for React can be very useful. As we embark on our job searches and you find that you really enjoy building front-end interfaces, this may be a great tool to build a quick portfolio of your talents. Here are some additional resources, and I am done. <laughs>